Millions of tax dollars are spent on this type of computer surveillance, a disgusting procedure for a professed free society. They're overstepping the bound. Just the other day, they walked into somebody's house, they suspected he was a drug dealer. He was using his automatic selector, and that police marched in, and they said, it looked like a gun after they killed the man. In America! Is that what America's all about? I'd say no. We want privacy. Less government for individual liberty. Get the government off our backs. A more sensible foreign policy. Uh, I'm very disappointed that so far in this Congress we have not yet seen any sincere effort to cut any spending. There's something wrong here that could and should be adjusted with decreased spending, not raising taxes, and not further robbing the Social Security Trust Fund. The more we threat, the more we intimidate, the more we want to bomb people, the more we're leading into another fiasco like Vietnam. We trade with Vietnam now. That's a much better way than trying to impose our will on Vietnam by going over there and dropping bombs. So I would say that uh, this just points out again that we have a very, very poor foreign policy in the Middle East. I wish the Congress would address the unconstitutional institutionality of presidents waging war. That to me is a lot more serious than uh, Monica Lewinsky, let me tell you. The corporations are in bed with the government. Peace and harmony can never be achieved by bombs and intimidation. Mr. Speaker, over the last uh, three to four years I've come to the floor on numerous occasions trying to sound a warning about both our foreign policy and our monetary policy. The cause, the cause is the Federal Reserve. The cause is the pro the problem is is the Federal Reserve has been granted authority that is unconstitutional to go and counterfeit money. And until we recognize that and deal with that, we are continue we will continue to have financial problem. The Federal Reserve credit created during the last eight months has not stimulated economic growth in technology or the industrial section, but a lot of it ended up in the expanding real estate bubble. This too will burst as all bubbles do. During the next decade, the American people will become poorer and less free. I do not see any reason whatsoever to take young men and young women and send them 6,000 miles off to a land to, a, to attack a country that has not committed any aggression against this country. War is not popular. People get killed and body bags end up coming back. I don't want anybody's legs shot off for some reason that is not justified and it's not a declared war. I think that should be the litmus test of everybody in this country and everybody over on the hill too. If this war is worth fighting, are you willing to go and lose your legs, lose your life, or send your kids or grand, send your grandkids? Will our country become freer, richer, safer, and more peaceful? Or will we continue to suffer from lost civil liberties, a stagnant economy, terrorist threats, and an expanding war in the Middle East and Central Asia. Is it not possible that George Washington's admonition to avoid entangling alliances is sound advice even today? Both candidates supported the war in Iraq and the continuation of it. Both supported the Patriot Act and its controversial attack on personal privacy. The true Patriot will repeal the Patriot Act, is what they will do. Both candidates supported increased spending in almost all categories. I'm the most conservative member here. I have voted, you know, against more spending and wasting government than anybody else. Freedom, prosperity, and peace. Just come home. We just marched in. Just come home. We have allowed our nation to be overtaxed and overregulated and overrun by bureaucrats. The founders would be ashamed of us for what we're putting up with. The system designed to protect individual liberty will have no punishments for any group and no, uh, no privileges. Today, I think inner city folks uh, and minorities are punished unfairly in the war on drugs. I think this is not a consequence of free markets. What's happening is there's transfer of wealth from the poor and the middle class to the wealthy. This comes about because of a monetary system that we have. When you inflate a currency or, or destroy a currency, the middle class gets wiped out. So the people who get to use the money first, which is created by the Federal Reserve System, benefit. So the money gravitates to the banks and to Wall Street. So that's why you have more billionaires than ever before. Today, this country is in the, in, in the middle of a recession for a lot of people. Michigan knows about it. Poor people know about it. The middle class knows about it. Wall Street doesn't know about it. 
Washington, D.C. doesn't know about it, but it's because of the monetary system and the excessive spending. As long as we live beyond our means, we are destined to live beneath our means, and we have lived beyond our means because we are financing a foreign policy that is so extravagant and beyond what we can control, as well as the spending here at home, and we're depending on the creation of money out of thin air, which is nothing more than debasement of the currency. It's counterfeit, and it is a natural, predictable consequence that you're going to have people benefit from it and other people suffer. So if you want a healthy economy, you have to study monetary theory and figure out why it is that we're suffering and everybody doesn't suffer equally or this wouldn't be so bad. It's always the poor people, those on retired incomes that suffer the most. But the politicians and those who get to use the money first, like the military industrial complex, they make a lot of money and they benefit from it. It is our job to check up and find what the Federal Reserve has done, audit them, and find out who their buddies are that they're taking care of. It's trillions of dollars we're spending on these war 